Oh, thank you so much, Raquel. And thanks for all of your activism and leadership, and especially on behalf of the trans community. Um, it's really important that your voice uh, be out there along with all the rest of us uh, to speak up and speak out. So thank you so much, Raquel. Oh my gosh, it's so great to see all of you, even though virtually. Let me introduce our panelists. First, Amanda Wynn is the CEO of the anti-violence organization RISE. Sonal Shaw is the president of a brand new Asian American foundation launched this spring. And of course, Lana Condor is an award-winning actress and singer. Sonal, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, help us get situated here. You know, the research tells us that one in four Asian Americans, which is an astonishing figure, have experienced incidents of hate. How does our country repair such pervasive trauma? Well, first of all, Secretary Clinton, what an honor to be on a panel with you. Um, you are such a leader, and I, I still remember the Beijing conference and your speech there, and it and energized so many of us. So thank you for your leadership over the years and continuing leadership. I, I think it's so important to recognize that you're right, 25% of the Asian American community has uh, faced incidences of hate. Um, even more stark is it's twice as many women as men. Uh, second, to educate the American public about the Asian American community and who we are and that our story is also a part of the American story. And then third, investing in research and knowing uh, what is the data about the community. We're over 40 ethnicities, 20 Pacific Islander communities. We're not a monolithic, you know, uh, model minority myth. We are a diverse community that has been part of the American story for a long time. And to get past this trauma, you know, I, I offer, you know, our, our colleagues and our friends to say, get to know your neighbors, get to know who they are, talk to the communities, don't be a bystander when something happens, make sure you take the trainings and help participate in that and speak out when you see it. Amanda, you've worked on gender-based violence issues for years. Um, that's really the work many of us know you for. But you've said that you sometimes feel like you've been asked to leave your race at the door. What do you mean by that? A question I've been recently getting from journalists is, oh, well, you know, what is it like to work on anti-Asian violence now? Um, is that new for you? And, and I've been Asian all along when I am in these spaces. The fact that we are in such a critical and quite frankly, young dialogue about intersectionality, right? That nothing exists in isolation, that all of our liberation are tied together. And yes, of course, when we talk about gender-based violence, there are always other layers that are attached to that. In the Atlanta shooting, for instance, there still existed a conversation, a debate about whether or not it was racism or sexism. And for so many Asian women, it was both and it was immediate. These issues absolutely are intertwined. And when we speak about these things, yes, I do fight for gender-based violence. Um, but of course, as I do that, I'm doing it in my skin. I'm doing it recognizing that we must continually work on it. And Lana, you know, there's, of course, diversity in um, Asian American experiences. Obviously, we know that. But can you share us uh, with a little bit of your own story as an adopted child in a predominantly white family and talk about why it's so important for non-Asian people to appreciate uh, the tremendous diversity of cultures uh, how, how how have you come to grips with that? To me, my parents would always say, like, love is thicker than blood. And I was like, oh, my gosh, thank you. Um, but I think that, you know, when it comes to conversations about about race and particularly, you know, I think, at least for me in the, in the past. In the past year, having these conversations with my parents has been very important because they're afraid for me. Hopefully they too will go to their, their friends and their family and, and continue to share that we are all human. Like we have, we're living, breathing human beings that deserve to be able to feel safe 
I mean, even one of my best friends, um, the night of the Georgia shooting, he had, he had no idea that there had been, this was not the first violent attack against Asian Americans. Like he had no clue. He was, he was like, oh, wow, so weird. Why are people, why, why, why are you guys being attacked? This must be new. And I was like, no, this has been happening for a while. But that was very enlightening to me because I was like, you're my best friend. And you, that wasn't on the forefront of his mind. So now I want to come back to you because you've been outspoken about how the historical contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders don't make it into the history that uh, our children are taught. What kind of curriculum would you like to see? And just like every other history needs to be taught, our history is a multicultural history in this country. It's not a Asian American history or Black history or Latinx history. It is a multicultural history, and we should be able to tell our history. We're also working in the state of Illinois to get legislation passed so Asian American history can even be taught in the schools. Um, and that we're going to have to do state by state, but then train the teachers, talk to um, book publishers about including Asian American history in there. So it's a it's a broad process, but it's important that we recognize that sometimes we're missing a lot of things in history and just because it's in the history books doesn't mean it's included everything that should be in there and our history is a part of the American history. I hope that you will have a specific program to try to educate government leaders at you know the school board level, the state level, the federal level because I'm already seeing resistance to teaching broad history um, in our schools. I mean, Secretary, you are so right on about this. Is like, there's one thing about just going to the schools itself and getting curriculum passed, but another to actually educate government leaders on why it matters. And it also requires us as a community to go talk to our government leaders and saying we want it in there at the city level, at the state level, at the district levels, making sure that it gets into that. And Lana, you've also talked about the importance of grieving with people who look like you. How did you create that community for yourself? I think I've created a really wonderful community of um, Asian American actors and actresses, which has really helped me a lot when it comes to grieving with my community. And there was this moment where we were all talking and and all we were all on mute, and then we were asked to turn our mutes off. And we did, and all you heard was just sobs and just like total grief as we were processing everything that's been happening. And that to me, as heartbreaking as it was, was very healing because you know that you, we're stronger together and you know that we are not alone, no matter how many times people or incidents make you feel like you are. Yes, and remember how much better we all are when we do recognize that and support each other. Well. I know we're supposed to wrap up, but is there anything that any of you want to ask each other while you're all on the screen together? Where, where do I go? What do I do? You know, like there's so much, there's so much out there right now. Where, what's a good resource to just keep the, keep the ball rolling? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to add some uh, resources for folks to check out. The first one I'd really recommend people go to is Hollaback because they have bystander intervention training. I would urge people to watch the PBS documentary if you haven't seen it already about Asian Americans, because I think it's good to us also just educate ourselves as to who, who our community is, who are all the amazing people that have done amazing work in this country, especially women. <laughs> and just really briefly, do each of you want to say maybe one thing about what we can do, what I can do, what any of us can do to be better allies? Let people know that it's real and to recognize that the Asian American community is a part of the American community. Recognize that, you know, we're not just a model minority, but we are, we are a diverse set of, of, of communities that, that are part of the United States. We happen to be inconvenient Americans and inconvenient Americans. Convenient when we want to be seen as American and inconvenient when something happens overseas, we're not seen as American. Uh, but we're American. We are your neighbors, your essential workers your doctors, but we shouldn't have to prove our merit to exist. This month is very exciting for all of us, but the it doesn't end in, in May. Thanks to each of you for doing all that you are doing to get that message out. And I can't wait to support you. Thank you all very much.